of no of no, is this a dating <laughs> thing? It's whatever it's you want. It's called Shirach Incorporated. Shirach and Shirach do. Oh, Shirach. You all shot guns. Shot guns. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're a long time. You Mr. Chapman? Sounds like South Africa. Ata Israeli? Shamati shat khanim. Oh, we're doing the Hebrew now. Um, yeah. Julian, ata Israeli? What's up, Stu? Mr. Benisrum? Mr. Israeler? Ich? Yeah. Ich kommt from South Africa. South Africa. Ah. Ich was geboren in Johannesburg, near Johannesburg. Oh. Ich bleib in uh, Highland Park. Oh. oh. Chicago. Okay. Oh, wow. I, I live in Highland Park. Do you bleib in Highland Park? No, uh, Highland Park, New Jersey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> das ist, das ist fair. Das ist I, nicht, I weit, nicht, nicht weit. Nicht weit. Nicht weit. Nicht Highland Park. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Okay. Are we are we introducing ourselves? Do we have any new new people here tonight? Yes, I'm new. David. Yeah. Is it David? Or you may call me David. David. Uh, What's your David last Hill. name, David? True. It's P E R O U. And tell us where you're from. Where you Washington D.C. And I now live in Palm Beach, not Palm Beach, New Jersey, Palm Beach, Florida. Oh. Nice, very nice. And where did you learn your Yiddish, David? Well, I picked it up from my late mother, may she rest in peace, and my great aunts spoke Yiddish. I don't really speak it. I just, I know it's a shanda. I'm not watching the Democratic Convention right now. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's nine o'clock, is it? You'll have time. I think it is nine o'clock, right? Yeah. Yeah. Answers on the red in Yiddish? No. <laughs> okay, Mike, you want to uh, let me, introduce? Let me it's eight okay. o'clock. I'm not first. Okay. No, I know you're not first. Um, no. Anyway, so so what we would like to do tonight is a few different things. First of all, I, I'd like everybody to mute unless you're called upon to talk. Now I can mute everybody, then it gets to be complicated, to, and I have to find out who's who's talking and so forth. But mute because we've got a lot of we've had a lot of background noise, and this way at least. Oh. And and when Joe calls on somebody you know, then you can unmute yourself. And I think you can unmute yourself sometime by just hitting the space bar or just the bottom left-hand corner. So, so what we want to do tonight is, is a few different things. Um, first of all, the new people, and I think we had one new person, any other new people will introduce themselves. And then we've got a couple of people that are going to tell their stories. And then we're going to talk. We, we said we want a theme for each week. So since we haven't had dinner yet, or at least I haven't had dinner yet, I, I'm going to get really hungry. So we want to hear what is your favorite dish that your grandmother or mother made and, um, and, and make us really hungry. It's kind of good, good to get us going, going into the holidays and so forth. And uh, if we have time at the end, we'll tell some jokes and we'll pick a topic for next week. And, and I sent out in, the, um, in the, uh, the email, I sent a list of topics that people suggested. And if you have others, we, uh, we can add them to the list and, and in two weeks from now, we can do a different one. So I think that's it. So if everybody mute, I'm gonna mute. And um, by the way, I'm, I'm recording this. So if anybody wants to uh, see this afterward, let me know can tell you where you can get it. So I'm gonna hand it over to Joe. Alan from his regards, he had a, a, a regional meeting he needed to go to. And so he said he would love to be here, but he couldn't make it tonight. So Joe, you want to take over? Sure. Uh, first thing we'd like to do, who else is new tonight? Raise your hand so we can, and that is Maxine. Maxine, would you unmute and tell us uh, where you're calling from and a little bit about uh, your uh, Jewish history real quick? Okay, um, I am in Marietta, Georgia right now, but I am from Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, my sister lives in Highland Park, so Highland Park, New Jersey, Tova. So if you know, yeah, the, if you know the name Kroll, she was Ruthie Kroll. Oh, okay. Um, Is where did you learn your Yiddish? 
Mm -hmm. Well, I, my mother and grandmother and aunts all spoke Yiddish when they didn't want us to understand what they were saying. So I understand a lot, but I don't really speak speak, but I, I, I kind of know what's going on. So. Okay, well, welcome to our, how did you hear of us, by the way? How did you? Somehow there was an email and I just got interested. Excellent. Glad, glad you're with us. Thank you. Uh, David Popowski, we'd love to hear a little bit about your story. We've been waiting for weeks now, David. So <laughs> please tell us a little bit about your family. Hey, Joe. Joe, I think there was somebody else that was new that raised their I'm hand. New. Da David? Joe, Which, no, who's somebody who's new? new? Somebody else was new. Julian. Oh, Julian, uh, I, I think thought you were, you were with us last week. Uh, this is David Pritzker. I think you m mangled my name unless there's another David with a similar name. There is another David. I don't see David Pritzker. He's, he's just got a, he just has his uh, name. name. He's, a, he's not sure. Oh, sure. oh, all right. Well, I, I put the name in and start right video. There, I, can you see me now? There he is. Yes. Okay, D David Pritzker, tell us a little bit about yourself and your, uh, uh, where you well, learned your uh, Yiddish. Well, uh, I live in Alexandria, Virginia. We've been here for a long time, although originally from, I was originally from Brooklyn, uh, like so many others. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't learn my Yiddish. Uh, my parents were fluent speakers of Yiddish, um, and I have all my life since then regretted that I did not get to be able to speak it myself. So like the previous uh, uh, speaker this evening, uh, I, I can understand a certain amount, but, uh, uh, and I have a, a body of, uh, of words and phrases uh, that I sometimes sprinkle my, my speech with, uh, at least when talking And you're a good family. singer, David. It's David Petru. Uh, Dave, oh, well. <laughs> How about this? I can talk. We sang together for 10 years in the Alexandria Choral Society. <laughs> Small Jewish world. The small Jewish world, I'll mute myself. Who else is new to join us? Jerry Kaplan. Jerry, yeah. tell us where you're calling from and how you heard of us. A little bit about where you learned your Yiddish. I'm a schlepper from Philadelphia. And I belong to the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs, a synagogue in the suburbs of Philadelphia, Oh, have Shalom in Richboro, PA. It's about a half hour from Philadelphia. And uh, my mother, all of a Shalom, she spoke uh, Yiddish to my grandmother. I don't remember my grandmother, but I remember the phrases and words and, and so forth. And how did you hear of our group? Through the Federation? Through the, through the Federation, the emails. Wonderful. Uh, who else is with us? Erwin, are you new? Yeah, I'm new. Um, I, uh, I was interested uh, to see what's going on with the group. My wife is uh, the computer expert. I'm, uh, I, uh, I don't touch the computer. Uh, I retired 10 years ago, and I figured to stay in business, I had to learn it, and I didn't want to learn anything anymore. However, uh, we have a little group here in Highland Park, Illinois. Uh, we have a little Yiddish <laughs> I was just about to join you. <laughs> and uh, well, you're entirely welcome. We're only a few yeah. people. Uh, used to be bigger, but uh, as you know, uh, one of our mom members last year turned 100. Uh, two others are in their mid 90s and uh, people are getting older. What can I say? I'm, I just turned 83. Uh, I'm starting to feel my age, but I always enjoyed speaking Yiddish and listening to it and oh. always thought that uh, I would uh, make a compendium of uh, Yiddish songs, uh, which uh, go way back. But there's so many uh, places where you can get Yiddish songs. Uh, and we just enjoy collecting them and listening to them. Uh, our Yiddish How did you hear about our group? Week. How did you hear my about wife, group? My wife came across it on a computer. Well, you need two scarves. And uh, one of our is. friends uh, 
uh, Julian here in Highland Park uh, was listening. I mean, I think he's listening today. Uh, told me about it. We're at the Yiddish club together. I speak a pretty good Yiddish, uh, as do uh, most of the people in the club. But uh, uh, it, we, we try to speak as much as we can. We watch Yiddish movies. Uh, it's more of a culture club than a Yiddish club. But uh, we, we, uh, we love the language and we try to have fun with it uh, uh, by watching movies and, uh, and old plays and, and, and things like that. Well, uh, welcome, welcome to our group. And I'm gonna encourage people when they tell us about themselves to uh, tell it in, as much in Yiddish as they can. Uh, anyone else who's new tonight? I don't see any raised hands. So Joe, Joe, we need to remind people to keep their, um, uh, keep themselves on mute so that the background. No, ex excuse me, are you David? Uh, are you the person, are you the one who just spoke? What is your name, please? I'm sorry, I missed it. The one with the, the handsome guy. That the was Irwin. Well, that, that could was be Irwin. either any of us. <laughs> uh, is that, no, no, the guy you just said, listen, if you want to mute all of us, it'll be a very um, uninteractive. This way we can, we can say something if somebody says something else. So it doesn't become like lecturing. Uh, most of us are very quiet. I know I don't hear any, any background noises. If, you all, if, if we all mute, we won't be able to have an interaction with each other, which I think all is right, extremely well, let's, important. Let's try it. Let's try okay. it over and see what happens. Oh, you know um, my name. Oh, you must know my name is written there. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give you credit for a good memory. <laughs> yeah, that, I need a lot of credit. I need a lot of credit. If we all, anyone, if we all speak else a little bit, tonight? if we all speak a little bit of Yiddish, you know, uh, a bissel and a bissel is a full shissel. Okay. Okay, so let's let's shift now. We want uh, a couple of people to tell us a little bit more about their families and themselves. And we're going to start tonight with uh, David Popowski, if you would, David. And then uh, uh, we have one more person we're going to uh, highlight tonight. And Mike, you'll help me with that later. Edie Rubin. Okay. David, un... un uh, Mute yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your family. So my parents are survivors. They're both from Kalushin. They were from Kalushin, 50 miles east, Kalushin, we call it, 50 miles east of Warsaw. And I'm, a, I'm speaking to you from Charleston, South Carolina. And um, my fa father's Holocaust history was, he's 11 years older than my mother, but he did um, the Polish army, Warsaw ghetto, Krasnik, Plashov, and at the end he was in uh, Matthausen, Ebensee actually, a subcamp of Matthausen. And he and two of his friends um, sur uh, on Liberation Day hitched on to a MASH unit to go to, and ended up in Lanzut, Germany, which is in Bavaria. And um, the unit went on and they stayed there. And one by one, as Lanzmann were looking for each other, they established a, a, a Kalashin, little Kalashin community. And indeed, uh, my two, my father's two brothers, my two mm -hmm. uncles, there were seven children and three survived, um, found him there. And then my mother separately, who was from Kalashin, but younger, she survived the war with my aunt and they uh, lived in disguise as Catholic girls. Did they, they, David, did they know each other? Uh, since they came from the same town, did they know each other? Your they knew of each other. They knew of each other. But and my uncle, my uncle Fischel, who was younger than my father, about eight or nine years old, younger than my father, always liked to kid my father that he knew my mother before he did, and because they, he was a contemporary of my mother. Yeah. So my mother and my aunt, um, my they had some means because my grandfather owned the flour mill at Palachin. And he sewed coins in um, the dresses. They sewed, so, uh, sewed coins in their dresses and their coats. And were able to bribe their way through the war effectively with um, getting false papers, living in a convent, working in a gas 
a glass factory. This is in Chenstohova, which is west of Warsaw. And uh, they survived. They were liberated in January 45. My father wasn't liberated until May 45. And they made their way back to their town to see if they could recover anything. And when they got there, the Russians had taken over. And But they met up with another Kalashin family, the Berman family. I don't know if anybody from Detroit or uh, Bloomfield Hills, anybody from Detroit on the thing? No. Anyway, they were uh, uh, family friends. And there was a group. They survived, four brothers, three or four brothers. and. Uh, a sister survived in the woods, the Berman family. So they, they joined together, made their way uh, west. They ended up at Schlachtensee um, in Berlin, a DP camp, which is where Anita's parents were, were located and her sister was born. But then they heard about my father and other Lanzmann and this Lanzhood. And so they made their way there. And that's where my parents met. That's where my brother, who's 14 months older than I, was born. It's where I was conceived. I always thought <laughs> people I was conceived in oppression and born in liberty. And, uh, and uh, they came over and gratefully they uh, had, my mother had distant cousins in Charleston who were actually Anita's hus late husband's great aunt and great uncle. Uh, Joseph and Rachel Zucker brought my parents over to Charleston. And my parents had just a wonderful life because they had a lot of Lonsman from that town. Charleston was very unique because it had a lot of expatriate Kalashinas there, but not just them. They had a rich Yiddish community, a lot of Yiddish guy. Among my father's best friends were Betty's, was Betty's father, Max Hirsch, and her father-in-law, Itzik Isidore Lancer. Saw them constantly. If I didn't go, a week went by, I didn't see them. And you were you were born you were born in Charleston. I was born in Charleston at St. Francis Hospital, and a Catholic <laughs> hospital. You know why? The Jewish doctor told my parents it was the cheapest. <laughs> Maddie Steinberg, Dr. Maddie Steinberg, said it was the cheap. But anyway, that's another story. So the Yiddish I learned in the house. My parents I, uh, spoke Yiddish to each other exclusively. I never witnessed a uh, conversation between my parents in English. They spoke to us in English primarily, but with a very transactional Yiddish. Nefensatia, Maxatia, Miloista, Vigatsta, Vitzvostitsta, you know, Shah, Radnishsifel, all those little phrases that you have to tell you and that you use to raise children. I'll tell you one cute story. That was, um, so my mother, uh, God bless her. You know, she ran the house, it ran like a machine, four kids. We had two sisters subsequently in the United States. And she would run the house, get us all ready, feed us three meals a day, go, then go 11 o'clock. She went to my father's store, his furniture store, and worked in the store from 11 to three. And then she came home three o'clock, got us all ready. You know, when we got home from school, but they joined us us and all that. So she would pluck stand in a chair at nine o'clock after that last spoon was cleaned. And she would walk down in a chair and she would say, Yechonish Kakoyach. Every <laughs> night she would say, Yechonish Kakoyach. I don't have any more strength. <laughs> and so you, I used to hear that every day. I just almost took it for granted. And then one time I was in college, I was there, I was home. And she did that, you know, and she plucked in the chair and said, Yechonish Kakoyach. I turned to my father, who was a tough guy. Let me tell you, he could be, he was, uh, he, he was a pretty straight shooter. And, uh, I said to him, Daddy, look at Mama. Look how hard she works. What's that in the room? And you know what, Vazuk said, he gave me what I used to call that Vusretsta look. You know, like, what are you talking about, look? And he said, in Kalashin, they chop wood. <laughs> 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 the women chop wood. Well, the women chop wood. Uh, so wait. But anyway, so we had, uh, I, I had a lot of Yiddish guide in my home, a lot. Well, if, uh, we, we want to hear more of your Yiddish. It sounds what you the, what you've learned sounds pretty good. Mike, who is the other person we want to hear from tonight? Easy. Yeah. Shalom. Uh, it's, it's been it's been a Palestinian. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Edie Rubin. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your family and how you learned your Yiddish. Well, I, my Yiddish is actually rather on the poor. I'm not sure I could pass my exam right now, but uh, I understand it. My parents, my father belonged to the Young Guardian group in Romania, 
and he came home on a Thursday night and he said, that's it, we need to leave here. This is 1939. We wow. have to get out of here and get on the ship and get onto that ship that's gonna take us to Palestine. We have to be out of here. And the family came over Friday night for dinner and nobody wanted to go and they all said, you go and you'll send for us because we're not, we're not going right now. They didn't believe it at that point that it was gonna get as bad as it did. So my parents went and arrived in Palestine. They wouldn't let them get off the ship and they shipped that, they sent them back to Transylvania. And then they, wow. got on, they got onto another ship. They came to, they got pretty close. They were near the island of Rhodes in Greece and the ship burned. There was a big fire in the engine room and they all had to get into, on rowboats and get onto to the island. They were encamped in the island for six weeks. And then finally, they, another ship was leaving Europe. They picked them up and brought them to Palestine. And then they were all put on the beach in near Tel Aviv. They were put off on the beach. And my mother had a cousin who started kibbutz down in the Golan, which still exists, by the way. And they came and picked them up and with the horse and buggy, and it took them three days to get from the beach back to the kibbutz, and they made it there. And my father was always very happy because he was finally going to have a role in the, in the land oh, yes. that he totally believed in. And he, then he fought in the army, and when he came home, in 1948, I still remember him saying, this is it, we have our land, this is going to be our place. And all the neighbors, everybody, in 1948, we all ran into the streets and danced in the street to celebrate Israel. How old were you in 1948, if I may ask? You may ask, seven born, years old. Seven years old. So yes. you were born in Palestine? Correct. And then it became... Israel. It became my father's dream, as my father always says, he, no matter how difficult it was, and things were very difficult. I mean, we, we were meeting our neighbors in the bomb shelters three times a night for, for months and months and years, all this was going on. And it was a, it was a difficult life, but I cherish it. And uh, your family stayed in Palestine, in Israel? Yeah, until I was in my teen years, then we left. You came to the States? Well, we were on our way to the States, but they wouldn't let us in because we missed our flight. So we ended up, there's a reason things happen. And it was Bashir that I ended up in Montreal, Canada. So I had to learn English and French, but I also met my dear, wonderful husband. You're right. That's exactly it. But yeah. when we spoke at home, the languages at home, my parents spoke to me only in Hungarian. That's all they spoke, they knew. They, we had to share an apartment, a flat, a two bedroom flat with a German immigrant family. So they spoke to me only in German. And then I went to the, kinder, to the school, to the Gan, to the Gan, and I had to learn Hebrew. And then in my teenage years, I had to learn English and French in Montreal in order to pass my high school exam. So how many languages do you speak today? I could comprehend all of them. I'm not fluent in all of them, but I comprehend and I could make my way through. So I think my Yiddish really is part of what I heard around in Israel or Palestine and Israel of pe from people and the neighbors. But some of it is also because of the, the German family that we lived with, and they spoke to me in German. So um, that's a little bit of that. Ich verstehe. And tell us again, where do you live now? Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, you're my neighbor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> really? I'll behave. <laughs> So, okay. so can, I tell, can I tell a little, little rumor I heard about you? Is that okay? So, sure. Somebody once told me that you were an Olympic qualifier for swimming. Is that correct? That is correct. I um, 
when I was living in Montreal and it was very frustrating because I wanted a, a Jewish identity. So someone told me to go to the YMYWHA, which is a young men's, young women's Hebrew association. And they said, you know, they have a very nice swimming pool and swimming was always something that was what my father taught me when we were living in Israel. He would take me to the beach whenever he closed his shop and teach me how to swim. And my biggest treat was to get corn in the top from the little Arab boy at the end of the beach. I, we used to buy, we used to collect enough, enough shekels so that we could buy a corn in the cob at the end of my swimming. But then when we went to Montreal and I joined the YMHA because it was a Jewish a form of Jewish identity, I started swimming and um, at one point, okay, I will say, I held the record, the Montreal record for women's 100 yard breaststroke and I was anchor woman for the freestyle relay. Okay. And I was supposed to go to the Maccabean games at the time but my parents, when that's probably the only time I was upset with my parents, they wouldn't let me go because I hadn't served my military. And if I had gone, I would have had, I would have been kept there to serve my two years in the military. Evie, and, what years, what years were that? Can you tell us the... Uh... Yeah, that was in um, 60, you know, 58 and 59. So you were a young teenager. That's correct. That's correct. Wow. And, and swimming was my big, that was my outlet for, for a lot of joy. And, and I really, and then I had to go to, I qualified for the Olympic trials. The Olympics that were in 1960 in, um, in Italy. And I was supposed to go to the trials from Montreal to Winnipeg. And in those days, you do not get paid to be an amateur athlete and we had to pay our own way and my parents didn't have money to send me to Winnipeg on the train and spend three or four days to qualify for the Olympics so I, I couldn't make it. That was disappointing. But I, I bet. Yeah. That's very interesting fact. I bet you many of the people that are in this group have some very interesting history and yeah. we're going to learn a little bit about that. Can we read a little bit of Yiddish yet? Yes. Who can you say to the Meise? Yes, I'm Meise. Anita, who's the Meise? Who's the Meise? Yes. Who is Barry Balik? Barry's Nishtu, aunt? Barry's a Vekalofen. Okay. I will say to the Meise, my sister, I was born in Eschwege, Germany, in a DP camp. And Barry Balik's sister, Roz, was born in Eschwege, Germany, in the Zelda camp. And last Mittwoch, I was born in school. Roz and Marty and Harry and Marlene and Eva and David and Anita and me at Gimet Roz and Roz and my schwester at Gizain. I don't know if it's in Schweiz, but they're Gizain each other and me at get kicked off photos and it was wonderful. This was their shame to Zain does. Oh, Amazing. Yeah. Zai ob nisch getroffen frier von dos von dos not. Nein. Zai ob drei Jahr. Drei Jahr. I'm gonna weg from the DP camp. Beide. So it's just given wie viel yours the zai ob nisch gesehen. It's a sehr glücklich. So getroffen. Getroffen, a shiny Yiddish, Anita. Yeah, I say it. I'm trying. Thank you, Anita. They, they, they are not what the business is doing. You can't. Can I not? 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 Can I
Ué, 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 ué. E roupa mais, tá? Aqui. Vem, Ivete. Tova. 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 Ich weiß nicht, mein Herz, mein, ja, okay. Ich bin geboren in Danzig. Wer hat gehört von Danzig, freie Stadt? Ja? Ihr habt gehört von Danzig? Danzig hat gewesen in Palen. No, Danzig ist gewesen in... Germany? In, ja, Danzig ist eine freie Stadt gewesen. Sie haben gehört, sehr Geld. Es ist gewesen von Deutschen, es ist gewesen ein größerer Platz, wie Deutsche sind dort gekommen. Ich bin gewesen so, dort ein paar Jahre zurück, wir reden nur Deutsch dort. Aber jetzt ist es mit Polen. Ich, es ist sehr berühmt, Danzig. Um, du bist gewesen geboren in Danzig? Ja, ja, ja. Ich, hab, ich schreibe meine Bibliografie jetzt ein bisschen. Mache ich als auch Research, ich möchte besuchen Research, auf Danzig. Und mein Tate und Mama sind gewöhnt dort. Und mir sind gewöhnt dort in Kristallnacht. Ich bin geboren in uh, 38. 38. Uh, ein Jahr, uh, September. Ein Jahr. Fahrenkrieg. Simtung. A Jur, ich bin gewonnen, a Jur alt. Aber ich habe, ich weiß nicht, ihr habt gehört von Danzig. Es ist ein sehr interessanter Platz gewesen. Und Jiden sind gewesen dort, aber sehr wenige Jiden, nicht kein Sach. Und als die Christelnacht ist gekommen, haben alle Jiden nicht gelassen, mit soll, mit soll, ähm, ich vergesse das Lied Jiddisch. Als wir so ruin, die größte Synagoge, haben sie geschickt, die alle Sachen in New York, in Manhattan. Als wir kommen in New York, und wir gehen ins Museum und das Theological Seminary, also alle Sachen von Danzig Synagoge ist jetzt du. Aber sie haben in, wir sind in gewesen dort bis wir sind gegangen, also wie alle, alle Jeden, die ähm, äh, Ghetto und ich bin geendigt in Auschwitz. Ich habe geendigt mein, mein, äh, meine Jugend in, in Auschwitz. In und für, wie hast du gekommen zu, zu den United States? Such uns ein bisschen mit dem Namen. 1950 in Bremen, Deutschland. Wir sind gewesen in der DP-Camp, also wie die, die Frau, wo, der Mann, der so dort geboren gewesen ist, die DP-Camp, fand ich hier kein, kein New York. Aber um, ich fand, hast du vergessen zu reden? Ich, 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 ich fand, ich habe so hab geredet, Jiddisch um, besser wie Englisch. Hast du gehört, hast du nicht dort, aber du? Wie dort? Dort bin ich ein Kind. Dort bin ich, bin ich zwölf Jahre alt. Ah, zu jung. Ein bisschen zu jung. Ein bisschen. Nein, nein, ich habe getroffen, mein Mann, ich bin gewesen zwölf. <lacht> Richtig. Ich, ich, ich weiß, war was? War was? War er gelernt, Jiddisch zu mir. Ich habe ich hab, ich hab gut nicht verstanden. Es ist ein schöner Jingel, als sie gekommen sind, mir in Gerät sind mir Jiddisch. Ich habe gekommen nach Hause und habe gesagt, meine Mama und Mama, ich, will, ich weiß mit wem ich, ich verhasse. Ich sage, sie das, das Jingel, ja, weil er hat Gerät sind mir Jiddisch. Und zehn Jahre später haben hab wir Hasse gehabt. Oh. Wow. Wow. Ja, ja. <lacht> Nur für, für das Gerät Jiddisch sind mir. Das ist ja. ein guter Meister. Wie, wie hast du gehabt, Hasse? Wie? In Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, in mir haben gehabt Kinder, dann sind wir gefunden, kein Israel, mehr Kinder in Israel, ein paar Kinder in Amerika, ein paar Kinder in Israel. <lacht> Wie viele Kinder hast du? Nur vier, aber zwei du, zwei dort. Und wir reden alle Hebräisch, aber wir reden nicht Jiddisch, es ist sehr, sehr, sehr traurig. Aber ich habe eine Klage, wir reden nur Jiddisch. 
weil sie wohnen, sie, sie wohnen in Mansi. Ich weiß nicht, ihr weißt, wo Mansi ist. Ihr weißt, wie Mansi ist? Ja. Mansi, ja. Indiana? Ja, ja. ja. Die Satmar wohnen dort. Mansi. Satmar. Und sie reden nur Jiddisch. Ja. In, uh, Shame. Ja, aber ich habe Gary in Jiddisch. Und ich habe da Polnisch in Jiddisch. Mein Enkel sagt sie mir, Herr Wuss ritzt sie nicht so wie ins. Du bist nicht so wie ins. So ich was meint ins. Ich will, ich habe einen Schädel. Nein, nein, ich gehe mit Jeans. Und, und, aber dass ich komme dort, ist das so wie, wie ein, ein Theater. Ich komme so gut als Schädel, ich, ich nehme auch die Nail Polish, ich, ich, habe, ich, ich nehme meine, meine Jeans und ich gehe sie mal weg. Und ich sehe ja so fremd. Aber, aber ja. es ist interessant, als sie wissen, dass ich für die Schreiben Sie wissen nicht, sie verstehen nicht, sie sind nicht sehen nur alt. Von wo bist du nicht da so wie ins? So ich, wo meinst du? Wo meinst du? Du bist nicht dasselbe. Es ist sehr interessant. Es ist doch sehr interessant, wie Kinder verstehen. Ob ich, ob ich rede nicht, dass sie sehen. Das ist sehr, sehr interessant. Meister. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's just thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I can read a sach. I read a sach with children. I read a sach wegen Auschwitz. Was are the two a sach children? Was you thinking? I have a good Yeah. The best I get a good Koch. A good Koch? Yeah. When, when, Wem kann man es fragen? Ich kann es fragen, meine... Als er ist hingerig, bin ich sehr ein Gitterkock. Aber er ist nicht hingerig, ist das auch gut. Nein. Nein. Heint hat mir reden jetzt ein bisschen, wenn wusste Mama hat gemacht und wusste nicht, kann kochen. So, wer will... Erst suchen wir uns ein bisschen für eine Rezepte, eine jüdische Rezepte. Favorite, favorite foods. What did you like, Jim? My mother made fabulous kasha vanishtas. Oh, yeah. Was ist das? Was ist ein kasha vanishtas? It's you brown in a, a pan, a little bit of butter, chopped up onions, and you add the kasha and two eggs, let that simmer. And then you make bow tie pasta. Yeah. And the kosh is done. You drain off the oil, mix it all up. Heavenly. Mom, I still miss you. <laughs> you got to put it. You, you, you have to put it in the oven. Don't forget. After you mix it, put, put it, it in, in the oven. oven. She didn't Esther. Esther. No? Esther's raising her hand. <laughs> I, I, I want to hear other people's foods. Where's Esther? In the lower right. Tell us about your cooking. When my father and I had come in from Shiel on Shabbos, he had he had made a ayah with cibolus. Oh yeah. Oh, it was very good with pepper and salt. And my father. My tante had gemacht an Shabbos Bulbenix. Was? Bulbenix. Was it those? Bulbenix mit Case. Ruth, do you know Bulbenix? Oh, I was that. Have you heard anybody hear hear a Bulbenix? I can't find a recipe. It's cottage cheese and potatoes. Mashed in a pastry, it was delicious. Oh, oh Zayo, yeah. Is there another? Is there Zayo another name for this? Anybody know? Nine. And my tata had gemacht on for Shabbos truskalkis and shletna. Our favorite was in shletna. Now we're going. 
Yeah. Was is dos zogens in English? Smetana is what? No, smetana is sour cream. Push it up. You should push it up, and, and you can eat it on matzah. It's delicious. It was like sour cream. Sour, it's, it's, uh, sour cream, strawberries and sour cream. Oh, yeah. My what, country, what country are you from? So what? My parents what? were from Poland. My oh, Poland. My top, my sons and my, my mama from Lemberg. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, okay. was like sour cream or like uh, yogurt. Yeah, but it was it was yes, sour cream. They called it sour. called spredna, which is a little a thick it's thick sour. sour cream. Smash the strawberries in it. It is fantastic. Just yeah. so you know, it's good. Shirley, get hungry. <laughs> Shirley, do you have a recipe for us? Well, I have a story. Uh, show, yeah, and Mike will show the. Sure, Shirley did a slide thing, so I'm going to put it on here. Okay. Hey, okay. Lou, can you tell Marcy to come and listen? Because she's involved in this. Um, she's asleep. Lou Peerless? Yes, yeah, she's asleep. Okay. So uh, one day uh, we're sitting around with our friends, and what does a, a Jewish balabusta? go crazy over what am i gonna make for passover this year so our friend was really going nuts she says i've tried everything already so we started talking about what we ate for holidays and then i said why don't we make a book you know with our favorite recipes and maybe stories of our mothers and this is the group of friends that she, you can see. That I'm oh, do that so uh, we have a friend, Anna, who's very uh, technically savvy. Anna. And she <laughs> says, send me the recipe. I'll, I'll find a matching picture or I will, you know, you can uh, photograph your food and I'll put it all together. <laughs> so it came out beautifully and we called the book uh, legacy of our mothers a taste through time and that. we've known each other since our children and grandchildren for 40, were for over 40, 40 years, years. Yeah. yeah so we always got together because most of us didn't have family in cincinnati so we were like family so move on. so this is what was in the book um Appetizer, salads, spreads, soups. I think there must be at least six chicken soup recipes. Uh, casseroles, kugels, vegetables, and side dishes. And then, of course, the main dish. Uh, I don't know how many brisket recipes we have. <laughs> and we do have a couple of American girls whose mother made seafood. You know, so, but we allowed it. And then desserts, of course. So, but the, I think the part that we liked the most was, uh, no, no, yeah, was um, we, some of us wrote little poems, some of us talked about our mothers and growing up, and we dedicated this to all the mothers, to our children, grandchildren, and to future children, so our heritage may continue. And uh, all our kids received copies of the books. I remember giving my new daughter-in-law one. And uh, I'm hoping to, God willing, give it to the grandkids. So uh, I come from a mixed marriage, uh, meaning, uh, not marriage, uh, parent, yes, family. <laughs> my father was Polish and my mother was Romanian. And Mike still remembers when we met the Romanians in Israel, he asked for horseradish. horseradish, and they called him, what did they say? Something? I don't know what they said. Something they said, what are you, a, a Pollock? What, you know? <laughs> that was but for the gefilte fish. Yeah, for the gefilte so, fish. They made the gefilte fish with salmon. Right, but it was also not oh. sweet. Anyway, they, they were offended. So my sister and I didn't particularly care for the Jewish cuisine, because we grew up in Israel pretty much a vegetarian. So, uh, and my father, fruits and vegetables were, he didn't eat salad, 
I think until I was married, because he would always say, if my mother would ask him, Ich bin ich da Kose, ich esse nicht goose. I'm not a goat, I don't eat grass. <laughs> but she finally, through the years, he learned to eat uh, cucumbers, yeah. potatoes, and onions, but never lettuce. So the fa so here we have my mom's story, and we could just go through so try to get in the picture. And uh, we celebrated everything with our friends. Our daughter was the first one to get married, the first shower. So uh, we celebrated all that together. And fortunately, my mother was still alive. So my favorite dish that she made, Lou, do you see your picture? And Reggie? No, I'm not there yet. Oh, oh man. Uh, Am I young? Lecce <laughs> was a great uh, spread made with uh, uh, cooked or uh, vegetables like peppers, onions, uh, tomatoes. And then as the mixture is soft, you kind of mash it up and you throw a couple of raw eggs in it until they firm up. And that was our favorite. Of course, my dad wouldn't even look at that. <laughs> and my sister's favorite dish was uh, what she called Jewish lasagna, lokshen mit case. It was wide noodles with farmer's cheese, a little uh, cinnamon, and a little sugar. Mm -hmm. So uh, we published this book, and anything we made, we gave to uh, 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 Stop Hunger, something about a children's uh, hunger initiative. So uh, we still have it, and just the pictures alone, we did all holidays together and everything. So it's um, really sweet, and it was nice to read our friends' mothers' stories as well. Fantastic. Rosie and, Betty, Rosie and Betty raised their hand. Right. As did I. <laughs> I have my mother sitting here with me, who's going to be 96 tomorrow. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday. birthday. Mazzato. Mazzato. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to let her speak the Yiddish, but Mama always worked. So it was my grandmother that I cooked with for 40 years. And my favorite thing to make, which till this day I make, if we can find the fish to make a filter fish. My oh. children, when they came home from school, refused to come in the house <laughs> for two days. Yeah. And then when Mama retired, <laughs> we had to find something that we could do together that I didn't do with my grandmother. So every Purim, we make hamantash for the world. I'm a little, I do speak Yiddish, a vessel. <laughs> but David, yeah, sure. David, I just- How could you not? <laughs> my grandparents spoke it, my parents, and my husband was a first generation, and he spoke a good Yiddish. Spoke also. a good Yiddish, Donald. Thank so, you, David. My number is Baila Bas Baltra Yosef Alevi. And I'm born here in Charleston, South Carolina, like my daughter said, tomorrow will be 96 years ago. Hey. <laughs> uh, how can I follow what the mind says what I heard just now from Edie Rubin and from the from the nice lady from Tova? Who? Her name's Tova. Tova, or uh, uh, Dovido, uh, and Anita. Anita. So everything that Joel, Joel said, that I, I, believe me, things like that happen too. But I was raised on Kalashina Street. I always tell that to Dovido because he knows <laughs> the Radcliffe Street with nothing but, but Kalashinas. But <laughs> it comes Friday, all the, all the, well, first of all, on Thursday, the guy would come in a truck with a bunch of chickens in the truck. He'd blow the horn, and all of the yentas would fall, run into the street. And <laughs> by the feet, and they would blow into the, you went to see how much schmaltz they had, you know? <laughs> and then everything was kosher. They'd take it, take it to Fet Alta. At, he was he was the shoichet. Yeah. And, and he would uh, do the final 
uh, whatever. Okay, then comes Friday, all of them were making, you could smell it in the street for a whole block. They were making cholin, they were making fishki. Yeah. Yeah. My mother, I love when my mother made helzola. Did you know what a helzola is? In yeah, no. I love it. I love <laughs> helzolas. <laughs> what is this? What is this? Helzola. If you if you get a chicken, not only with the fat, you can get a chicken with a nice long neck, and that's a helzola. Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. We ate that. Yeah, Gargle. we. Call it the gurgle, yeah. Yeah, we call it a gurgle. Not, yeah. Yeah. The gurgle. Is the gurgle. Yeah, that's a gurgle. The neck itself, the gurgle. Oh. A gurgle, yeah. But the, but the hazel is the skin around the gurgle. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, Tom Gnaidem. No. Ask Kelly May. I have to tell you, I never developed a, a, a taste for tongue. <laughs> for what? My favorite, David. What's that? Tongue. 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 Sing. 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 Michael. No, no, Michael. So, so my grandmother made the kasha, so I'm not going to talk the kasha. But you know, Shirley, Shirley's parents were my parents. You know, my parents died young, and, and, and really we stayed at her parents' house. We saw them so much time. And so I'm going to tell you one dish that she made for me that I thought was terrific that I've never heard before, never heard since. She used to make split pea soup with matzo balls. But they were tiny matzo balls. You know, they, we, we call them super balls. And it was the greatest dish. And I loved it. And I've never, I've never heard of anybody making that before. Can you say it again? Matzo balls can't be bad. What, I'm sorry, matzo balls with what? It was split pea soup with little tiny matzo balls in it. Oh, wow. And, you know, that. we put a little hot sauce in it, and I'm telling you, it was the greatest thing. When we were going to come, she would stay up late at night making all his favorites. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I didn't want to lose them. What about Have any of you ever had tutut kapusta? Yeah. Wow. What, what is that? that what is kapusta. Kapusta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tutut kapusta, that was a very... That was very popular at our house on Friday night. Cab Stuffed cabbage. You got it. Stuffed oh, cabbage. Yeah, I, 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 I make it. I love it. Yeah. Was it, was it sweet? Was it sweet? No. no. Yeah. Collip Collip yeah. Yeah, I, I make it sweet. Ruth, no. tell me. Oh, so I, this is what I thought you um, you guys were talking about before with the, with the mashed potatoes and cottage cheese. My mother didn't make it like that, but I used to call them, I used to call them mashed potato pancakes. They're, they're not lactis because lactis are made out of raw potatoes, but they were, they're called bulba bilka. So it, it just took multiple steps because first you had to cook potatoes and then you had to mash potatoes and then you made them into, then you made them into pancakes and you fried them that way. And they're, they're bulba built. I don't know, I think it's uh, And then there was another thing we had, which I, it doesn't qual, that my mother made, which I, doesn't qualify as cooking, but we gave them Yiddish names. So we had something in my house that was ultimately called Chazerai and Schweinerai. I don't know why she called it that. <laughs> Which is the same thing. It was just cottage cheese with cut up vegetables in it, scallions and tomatoes and cucumbers. Yeah. Right. And for some reason in that my in my house and all the cousins, we all she, the, the parents called it kazarai. I guess because you dumped you dumped every, all the old vegetables you dumped into it and so it was whatever you had. Rosalind, what do you what do you have up there? That's my That's mama. mama. Betty. Oh, Betty. Betty, what do you what willst du uns suchen? What? What do you say? Was willst du uns suchen? Was will ich suchen? Yeah. I got to talk English. Are you the position? Somebody turn off their TV, please. Oh, okay. I I, I want to tell you about okay, my... Let me put this on you. Can you listen to a little Yiddish? Okay. Okay. Nobody, nobody wants okay. to say 
frequency. Okay, Betty, tell, tell yeah, us what you're saying. saying. Tell us. My frequency. Yeah. It's wonderful. And you get all the, you know, the, the, the I want you to listen to it. And the goggler and, uh, and also the chicken feet after. Yeah. The, the pippet. And, and also mat matzo balls and, and meatballs. Yeah. And you exactly. cook that, I'm telling you. It's a uh, meal. Also, I've got, I've got to tell you this here. Uh, chicken soup with, with chicken feet in it, you know, is the most Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. so, let, so let me say, you can't buy, like, like I said, you know, you would buy a whole chicken, so you had chicken feet. But now you don't get the chicken feet. But I found a place, this is years ago, I found a place that just would sell chicken feet by themselves. I got so excited here. Yeah? I can't. <laughs> I can't. Wait a and is this, we want to know a secret of your uh, longevity. Did you eat anything special to make you look so young and so nice? Thank Chicken you. feet. Thank you. I appreciate that. No. <laughs> I, yeah. I want a secret of what to eat in order to look like you at 96. Yes. It's not easy. Yes. It's not yes. easy. It's not but, easy. I, I'll maybe it's what she didn't eat. Right. Oh, baby, yeah, yeah. Maybe what you didn't eat. Right. But I'll get to give up my chicken. Gift is up, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Mein Futter at the Bleis chicken feet. Oh. This is the bang for aim. I made a chicken soup and I, made, I put the chicken feet in there. You know, I cleaned it real good, you know. This one, this one comes into the house and she oh. says, Mama smells like Yantif. It smells so delicious, your chicken soup. And she opens up the pot, you know, and she looks in there and she says, what is that? I said, what? That? I said, what? I said, that chicken feed. I, I thought she was going. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I, see. I said, believe me here, yeah, that's what makes it the gel. And, the, and when you put it in the refrigerator, it gels the soup and it makes, gives it a good taste. Well, I tell you, I didn't do it after that, but I had such such uh, a, de a delicious meal with myself, just sitting down there eating chicken. Eating her chicken. Feet. Now I have to tell you about chicken feet. When it when times were very tough in 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 Palestine and then Israel, and we didn't have food, my mother would go to the butcher and beg him for a couple of chicken feet so she could make a. Uh, soup for Shabbat. That was the only thing she could get because they had we had nothing, and she would beg wow. him for a few wow. pieces of, for a few feet so she could make the soup. What's I the would have given you all my feet. Yeah. Just a comment, Joe. Okay. Joe. Joe. Yes, Shirley. I just want to uh, elaborate on the chicken feet. Uh, it's, my mother always made it with chicken feet, and uh, she said it strengthened the soup. So, and then she would eat it, you know, do you know the Yiddish word grizzit? Yes, yes, I love it. Yeah, it would drive me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Shirley, how do we get a copy of your cookbook? Oh, I'll we send can... you the, I'll send you. This... Uh, yeah. Yes. This is the book. And, and I'm reading through the book, and I'm just getting so hungry looking at all these great dishes. You know, right. you about stuffed cabbage. There were six yeah, different uh, recipes for stuffed cabbage. Oh, yeah. Lou. 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 They, they yeah. advised versus Gribbenus. I know. We all know. Gribbenus. Yes. It's the 11th commandment of the Jewish people. Every Gribbenus. A precursor. <laughs> A precursor to a heart attack. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that, that, that's what that's what that's what Betty didn't eat. One no, of I the did. Did. I I did. 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 Ever hear of Pacha? Yeah. Yes. 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 I, yes. I made Pacha. What's he talking about? Cha? What is Pacha? I, I can't uh, I jelly. Uh, made the hoofs of the cow. Jelly. Right. Oh, that's what right. it's asking. Right. But we called it chicken feet and garlic and an egg was inside it. I oh, mean, yeah. I Lots of it. Yeah. My Lots grandmother of came from it's Israel. So so delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Every Shabbos. 
Does anybody know where you can get chicken feet today? Please tell me. <laughs> I thought it was illegal to sell chicken feet. I don't. You think, you know I you know why you them. can't get them anymore because they use them for the feed for chickens. They make a Ooh, mush out no. of it, and that's what the chickens eat in farms. The kasha saying. But, I think I saw Maybe. 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 chickens. We should have had chicken too. Okay, Mike, we're closing down. We got three minutes left. Would oh. you like to? Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thanks. I want to thank everybody. We, we, Can I have a moment? You. Can I have a moment, please? Go ahead. You have a moment. No, I, I want to share a story with you. Someone was talking about being in the Catholic hospital. And uh, era of Christmas, 2013. I wasn't feeling well, went to the hospital, St. Jude's in Fullerton, California. And they admitted me and I get into a room and all of the nurses are nuns. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have a calling rather than just caring for somebody, they really have a calling. So the Padre comes in to talk to me and he's got a, you know, a clerical collar on and I don't know Spanish, and he doesn't know much English. So he talked for a, little, a few minutes, and then he left, and two minutes later, one of the nuns came into the room, said, excuse me, walked behind my bed, took down the wooden cross, and put up a mother of it. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, and that's okay. the way it's a good I, I, story. I, I, that's very good. Let me just tell you a quick story. Um, one of my one of my uh, my very orthodox daughter had to go to the hospital and there was a cross about her bed she didn't know what to do but she had to be in that hospital it was catholic so she called the rabbi and she said rabbi that's our rabbi in highland park i have a cross up above my bed how will i get healthy i feel terrible so he said in yiddish uh and hanged and he stays, so he stays. You know, as a Translate that for me. What does it mean? It means it that mean? as long as he's hanging and you're standing, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lou, 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 Lou didn't finish the story. Just one, one more, Emma. That, that my, my wife was one of the people in the cookbook. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think one of... One of my mother's recipes is in there, I believe. Yeah. But in any case, I, I had a right different here. idea for the book. There she is. There is Marcy. Oh, she's so pretty. Uh, yes, she is. And she's asleep right now. Um, <laughs> well, so, she to get up early for teaching. But I suggested to Anna that instead of the, the little, you know, co cover that she had, she should put a, a steam liner, uh, an ocean going yacht on the front of the cover and somehow get onto the yacht, the name S.S. Mein Kind. S.S. Mein Kind. All right, guys, I got to go. This was Good wonderful. Night, everyone. I hope Good I will join you again. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Very enjoyed. Bye. Very enjoyed. Bye. 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 We've got we've got a ton of themes. Bye. 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 Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Early. <laughs> what does your shirt say? Bye, Edie. Bye. Well, look at Shirley's shirt. What does it say? Michigan. Oh, oh Michigan. Oh, yes, cool. I, my grandson is in cool. Michigan, and I went to Ohio State. Big rivalry. So he said, oh, Georgia Tech. So I have to wear this. I lost a bet to yeah. him. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.